G'day fellas, and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the south side of the map, playing as the French in the color blue, it's Lenoch! And on the north side of the map, playing in the color purple as the Ottomans, it's Liquid de Muslim. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Wetlands. We're here once again, watching two of the world's best players battle it out in preparation for Golden League. Looking forward to seeing what we've got today because this is a bit of a tough matchup. In fact, we've seen this matchup before quite recently. Donati uh, played this matchup and uh, was playing as the French and decided to do a little bit of uh, a little bit of feudal action. So we're going to be seeing some feudal stuff today. Now, the reason why we would see feudal action coming out from the French potentially, and now I don't think Lee Knox is the kind of guy who's going to do it, but the reason why is because this matchup is not a good matchup. It is not a good matchup for the French. If anything, it is highly favored towards the Ottomans. And can, can, can we just take a moment just to appreciate the beauty of this biome, the beauty of this map? Let's, let's get a cinematic mode for you guys right here because we've got ourselves an absolutely beautiful biome here. It's the desert biome, of course, on wetlands, one of the brand new biomes. Well, I say brand new. It's been out for a while now, but I don't know about you guys, but that's, it's looking beautiful. It's looking absolutely gorgeous right here. And, you know, we've got to stop and smell the roses sometimes. At least I think that's how you meant to use the saying. You know, I always get this get scared of like using sayings that I feel like I know what they mean but then it's like actually uh ring around the rosies pocket full of posies about is about people dying a tissue a tissue we all fall down like <laughs> yeah we, we sung it as children and uh yeah anyway people are dead so anyway <laughs> we move forward but let's talk about why, why this matchup is so damn hard as the French so French naturally you're going for that school of cavalry at least you're going for that school of cavalry at the moment wait until you see the pup and you might have a bit of a change of heart of course, for anybody unfamiliar with the pup, that's the public update preview. It will be coming out on the 17th of, of this month. And it's going to include a complete landmark rework of all the underused and unused landmarks. Obviously, Chamber of Commerce is something that the French very rarely use. So it's highly likely that it's going to be switched up. Maybe they make it a completely new landmark. I've got no idea what they're going to be doing for it. But nonetheless, I'm excited about it. Maybe this is the last time we see the School of Cavalry ever used. Who knows? Probably not. Uh, but I guess the point is that you almost always go for the School of Cavalry. So naturally, you're going to be making Cavalry, right? Right? Well, yeah, you are. But at the same time, the Ottoman player, well, guess what? He loves to make a military school, doesn't he? The Ottoman player does. And that's exactly why we see a military school coming down for Demuslim already. And of course, it's going to be Spearman. The only unit that's available to him in the Dark Age is the Spearman. So naturally, the defense is already built doesn't have, a, have to drop a barracks. You know, if I'm playing Chinese and I'm playing against the French, I've got to make my barracks in the transition period, get out a spearman or two, so I don't lose those villages. But here, here, the Muslim, with the military school, it's already there, already there. So this is a nice little thing, nice little touch in the matchup. And it makes it hard for French because now French have to kind of play outside the box. Obviously, you still want to go for knights. You still want to look for uh, mistakes that your enemy might make where you can pick up a villager or two here or there. Uh, but at the same time, it's, it's going to be harder for you, right? There's going to be less mistakes or less opportunities for mistakes that your enemy makes. Wheelbarrow now going to be coming in for Lenoch. Going to be starting off with some uh, some smart investment in, the, uh, in his economy. At the same time, over on the other side of the map, we do see the Twin Minaret Madrasa coming down now. Of course... I'm going to put it in the most optimal position. This is the best position that you can get it. Just so that those berries are nice and close to the town center. Any No risks of knights coming in, or at least minimal risk of knights coming through. And the first of the spearmen is on the way. A lot of aggression going to be moving down towards this side of the map. I suspect, yeah, this town center is quite far away. In fact, there's the town center. You can see right there, he is no, nowhere near the gold, unfortunately. Lenok, I mean, he, he's got two golds that are pretty much equally placed Actually, they, I think they're equally placed away from the town center. Uh, and yeah, unfortunately, not going to be loot, or not going to be able to defend this just yet. Does have to pull villagers back off his food source as well. So Lenok, definitely this early aggression hurting him quite hard. School of Cavalry about to come out though. Expect to see a knight out immediately and an archery range drop down. Let's see what we've got right here. There's the knight in queue and the archery range and the archery range. Double Broadax also coming in. Jeez, Lenok going... Absolutely ham with the economy right now. Where, where is that? I'm waiting for that archery range. It's very, very delayed. There we go. There we go. Any second now. There we go. There we go. All right. I knew it was going to come in. It's just a matter of time. Actually going to go for a scout instead. Oh, so, so he cancelled the knight. Went for, oh, sorry. He's cancelled the knight. Went for a horseman instead. And then used that gold to research double broad axe. So going for a more uh, infantry based composition. I, I would suspect maybe going into a heavier archer comp. On the other side of the map, though, we do see Wheelbarrow coming through now. 
for the Muslim. Expect to see double broad axe as well. He does have three vills on the gold. So once they're finished, you can expect to see double broad axe will be researched. Spearman on the way back as well, looking to just defend this position. Double broad axe now coming through for Leenok as well. Horseman coming in. It's going to do very minimal damage here. Maybe, maybe might might prep a villager for a kill on a night, a kill by a knight later. He actually goes for a surround right here. Is, is that what he's doing? I'm not sure 100 percent what he's up to. Spearman gonna be forced back. Archer on that backside, but villager might go down. A little bit of a mistake right here. You know, we we're talking about mistakes earlier. How's that for a mistake? Horseman goes down to a, for a villager. I tell you which one I'd rather take. The villager every single day of the week. Very unfortunate right there by the Muslim, and at the same time very well played by Leenok. So good stuff for him. So the Muslim going to be down a villager, and against the French, that's not a position that you like to be because they do have a propensity to really get going with their villager counts. Obviously, their their villagers take a, a little bit, uh, they're they're a little bit shorter to build, take less time to build. That's 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 the word I'm looking for. Only 18 seconds in the feudal age uh, for a, a French villager compared to the 20 seconds that a normal civilization is going to have to uh, train that villager. Spearman numbers starting to build. Still moving in on, on Spearman at the moment. Didn't actually cancel the Spahi, but will... Or didn't actually cancel the Spearman and, and begin training the Spahi, but now we do see Spahi going to be coming out. Also dropping down at Barracks and just looking for a second town center at the at the moment. We do see that that Vizier point is coming through and it's going to be Anatolian Hills. So not going to be going into Metadrums. Going to be looking to play this a little bit more orientated. I would suspect maybe around the Castle Age. Might look to potentially go towards that direction. Does make sense considering this map. The food is absolutely everywhere. And by the way, look what we've got right here. We've got we've got a couple of landlocked deer. It wouldn't be wetlands without some resources tucked away in a forest. But at least at least he knows, right? Like you can come, you can chop through that kind of thing. But still, it's just like, why though? Why? Look at look at this. Like, oh man, it's it's kind of crazy. I'm, I shouldn't complain about this map. You know, we got we, it, the biome's absolutely beautiful. We love it. We love the biome. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, the map sometimes doesn't have the the nicest of spawns. Spearman also coming out from Leenok as well. Not something I expected, but obviously he would expect a cavalry composition coming out from his opponent because it's very normal to go into Sparky, right? Like, you, you think about it from the perspective of his enemy. I've got spears, so they're going to make archers. So my archers are, are going to get countered by his Sparky, so I'm going to build a Spearman preemptively to counter his Sparky. Perfect. Great thinking. And look at this. Oh, we got trouble. We got trouble in t in Paradise right now. And, and it's, tell you what, it looks like Paradise. It might be a bit more of an oasis. Villager number two going to be going down. He's working down these villagers slowly. Next one might go down as well. Oh, he gets away with one health. Literally one health is on that villager. Took a shot. It must have taken a hit from a spear. Yeah, a hit from a spear and then all the rest of the arrows. But manages to keep it alive. Two worker kills so far. Second TC is up. So Lee not going to have an opportunity now to to decide what he wants to do. And he's got a couple of options that he can go for. Number one is obviously look to scale himself. That means dropping down the second town center. But if you do that, then you're kind of playing into the way that the uh, that the Ottomans play. You know, they, they do want to go for that second TC. They do want to try and keep stay alive, get to the castle age, get to that crossbow mass. And, and that, that's where it all gets a little bit too crazy to deal with as the French. So let's see exactly what Leenok does, whether he looks to try and play one base here. Maybe he can look to even things up not by making a town center himself, but by actually taking out a, a town center. And that's exactly what we see right here. Siege engineering now going to be coming through for the, the for the Lenoctopus. Not a lot of units though. That, and that's one of the things to note, right? Siege engineering is great when you've got, say, a lot of units. <laughs> uh, 20, 25 units around there because... The, the issue that you're going to have is the town center is an absolute beast. You chuck 10 villages in here. You throw six villages behind repairing. You bring 10 more villages over here just in case you need to start burning down a ram. And this town center is not going anywhere. Uh, so let's see. I, I suspect a Muslim's defense is going to be pretty solid. He's got a lot of resources in the bank uh, with regard to a, a potential age up, actually. 361 gold is quite a bit. Now I'm going to be throwing down double archery range. So this to me tells me that, uh, hey, we're, we're playing Feudal Age and definitely the right choice. Obviously knowing, or he might not actually know. I don't actually know whether he spotted out that battering ram, but obviously he's going to know about that battering right now. R battering ram right now. Seven villages inside the TC just chilling out. I don't know what this is all about. He's just mining th those villages. Oh no, sorry. I do take that back. It's, it's seven spearmen. Never mind. I, I got myself a little bit carried away right there. Triple archery range going to be coming out, though. Down on Lenox's side of the map, though. Still no no second town center. Going to be going not necessarily all in here, 
But obviously, if this attack fails, he's not going to be in the best spot. He can look to try and take out villagers, and that's exactly what he does. He's up to four worker kills at the moment. So Leenok doing a pretty decent job on just keeping keeping uh, the Muslim on his toes. Two battering rams going to be heading in towards the front. Undefended. Not a huge archer mass here either. So villagers should be pretty easily able to contest this. Not to mention the fact there's spears here as well. And now the town center going to be able to fire down. Villagers standing by, ready to begin repairing. And straight away we can see them repairing. So this is where, you know, we were talking about the, the prospect of villagers. He's got all these villas up here. These bad boys should be down here. Just He, he could have had, you know, two, three volleys potentially from those villagers. Going to continue firing off. Villager actually going to be under attack underneath the town center. Does get pushed back, but he's, he's doing a decent job to hold onto this TC. And it definitely feels like an absence of villagers coming out right now from the Muslim. We need villagers to repair this town center. We also need villagers to, to get pulled to burn down these ramps. At the same time at the backside, we do see those knights working their magic, but Spearman now going to be moving to the front. And it looks like the Muslim not really breaking a sweat at the moment. And battering rams going to get battered, forced away. And there's the villagers finally getting pulled towards this town center. Just wants to repair it up, take this opportunity to repair it. But very solid defense there from Demuslim. I, I didn't think he was going to be able to hold that without pulling more villagers, but he managed to do it. And he did it quite overwhelmingly as well. Like the numbers here are looking pretty good for him. So he's he's managed to time this quite well. Knight coming in, a couple more archers, but it looks like it's going to be a cleanup in favor of our Ottoman player. Now this gives him an opportunity, a window, if you will, uh, to go to the Castle Age. So whether that's what he decides to do or whether he looks to double down and just, you know, throw down even more production. It's up to him how he wants to play it. But just remember, the longer you play in the Feudal Age against the French, the more dangerous it is. But I would just note, our French player is not on two town centers. He's only on one. And losing this fight, not being able to push this fight, means that now all of a sudden, you haven't really evened up the town center, or you haven't evened up the, the town center count at all. Yeah, you took out a few villages. He's lost six villes now. But still, he's catching up and he's scaling. So the longer this game goes, the better it gets for our Ottoman player. But obviously, there's more win more than one window. And Leenok is looking for it. His first attack has failed. It's fallen flat on its face. But now the second one is, is looming. The potential of one of the best technologies in the game about to come out. Leenok may look to unlock it in the Castle Age, of course. We're talking about royal bloodlines, unique to the French. Available in the Castle Age through... The landmark of the Royal Institute. Giving an extra, I think it's 35% health. And we do see it is going to be the Royal Institute getting thrown down in the back of the base, nice and hidden away from any potential scouts. You can see there's no scouts on the map, but if there were some scouts on the map, they wouldn't be looking at the back here. They'd be looking more towards the front, scouting out for enemy army positions, those sorts of things. So now the Muslim, almost thinking about doing the same thing himself. 32 villages on, on food is a lot of villages on food. But nothing on gold. And at the same time, we do see these, these cavalry units posturing around the gold. So by the same token, Leenok is basically saying, I want to get castle and I don't want you to get castle. He's guarding the first gold. Second guard is, gold is being guarded. There's no other gold that he can access. Obviously, there's one out here in the middle of no man's land, but it doesn't really look like a, a gold that's going to be that hotly taken by, by the Muslim. So now for me, the question is we've seen the French do... Do the right thing. Well, not do the right thing, but, you know, go go for that that play early on. It was denied. What's the second play? It's obviously going to be another castle, or it's, it's going to be another attempt at, at an attack. But I would I would suspect we do see royal bloodlines come through, an extra 35% cav. We do see the veterancy now for the royal knights. And I would, I would suspect more stables getting thrown down. How many stables have we got? We got two at the moment, so not a huge amount of stables. But I would suspect more. And I, I would think he'd be going quite heavily into that. But by the same token, this is something that the Ottomans can prepare for. Through their vizier points, they have access to Janissary Company, which has the ability to call eight Janissaries at a moment's notice. And I tell you what, this is this is quite the moment uh, that, uh, that might make the difference because eight spears that are hardened? That ain't, that ain't gonna do it. That ain't gonna do it, coach. Knights now moving in. They've got their plus one armor. Gonna take very, very lo little damage here. Look to just kill a villager or two. Eight vills lost this game, but he has taken the villager lead. He's up three vills now. So slowly, he starts to run. starts to gallop. And that po military population, it might look daunting. 46 against 21. But remember, out of those 21 military units for Lino, eight of them are going to be knights. Now we do hear the next vizier point coming through. There's no way for us to tell what it is unless we actually spot it. Doesn't look like a mom's. 
Could be the meta. Are we able to see, actually, has he gone for meta drums? It doesn't look like it. We don't have meta drums that he's gone for. Night Raid coming in over on the east side. Two more villagers do go down underneath the pond. So I think we've got the answer. You know, what, what, what do you do when, you're all, you, when, you, when your feudal all-in fails? Well, you, you, just, you just go Castle Age and all-in there. I mean, he's actually doing a pretty good job in keeping up with economy, uh, or keeping up with the numbers economically. He's only behind two vills, but I guess another thing to consider is there's three military academies, or military schools rather. We've also got the MIA coming in as well. So this isn't necessarily accurate. I mean, obviously it is accurate, but it's not telling the full story. Vils force back. A little bit of a little bit of a, a double double pronged attack. More knights in queue. Have we added in more stables yet? Doesn't look like it's still just the two stables. Knights getting caught off guard. Ha yet to pick up that royal bloodline. It's about to come in right now. There it is. Extra health, up to 310 health now on each of these knights. And this is where this is where the problem is. Because Lainok might look to push right now. He could do a lot of damage here. Do we see a, a military school rushed up? It doesn't look like it. And the knights are coming in, posturing, but it doesn't look like a fight he's going to be able to take. Still, the numbers are looking fearsome. But he's, he's going to be pushing on towards the front. We enter into the cinematic mode as he, he's looking to try and take it. And Lenox somehow thinks he can actually take this battle. Let's see how it goes as the French knights begin making their way through. Spearman yet to move towards the front. And remember, the extra health coming through for Lenox units is going to make such a difference here. Managing to get underneath the town center. A couple more villagers go down. He's poking, he's prodding. He's trying to get in the attack before the veterans. He comes through on those upgrades. He knows that it's in queue. Meta's on the front line. The same time, the knight's going to be falling back. Wants to watch out for those spearmen. And you can see him just focusing them down, actually looking to hit the sparky there as well needs to be hitting down these spearmen and he's doing a decent job but remember these knights are like imperial knights at this point this is what makes them so scary and look at them just overwhelming the front line completely cleaning up everything and now the muslim's like uh excuse me sir that's illegal you can't do that but remember remember it's an ottoman player he's going to be funneling out units non-stop here even if you're standing on top of him even if you're camping him he's still going to have more and more units coming in beautiful job with the kiting here non-stop kiting Looks like veterans, he has come through for these archers and he's going to be able to find nice little choke points for it. At the same time, villagers keeping on working. So he's going to have more units coming through. Expect to see crossbows coming out. Expect to see Janissaries potentially coming out. But he's just going to stick with archers. Look at this, just a classic combo. The classic Dark Age, the Dark Age, the classic Feudal Age combo. Knight coming in now over on this eastern side of the base. Villagers also under pressure from those archers. At the same time, the meta, he's like standing there fiercely with his drum, but unfortunately the drum is not enough, so you're going to need to do more than beat those drums, and I'm not talking about prayer, I'm talking about a weapon. Pick it up, son, because that ain't Falco. Archers now manage to hold, and the Muslim once again holds on against the French aggression, the non-stop, the relentless French aggression has been absolutely insane this game. And look at that, Lenox taking the village lead, 27 villagers have gone down. While we were watching that fight, the Muslim is down a lot. I tell you what, you, your enemy goes to town centers. Often you're thinking, well, I'm just going to go for a second town center myself. Not today, my friends. There's no need. Look at this. More vills going down. They're idle. So it's, it's, you, don't even, you don't even see them because they're just idle. And they're all just going down. 32 vills now taken out. Look at this. Lenok just having an absolute field out. Mangadel coming out, joining the party. Looks like it does manage to hit the knight. And now without Mangadel, he should be able to clear, clean up these archers completely. The Muslim finally realizing that those villagers were not being good little boys and, uh, and giving them a paddling, undoubtedly. Crossbow's also going to be making it out onto the field now. But I tell you what, Lenok, he's up 20 villagers right now. Sure, he's down a town center, but he's up 20 vills. He's done a great job. He's played French absolutely perfect here, and he's looking incredible. He's looking really good, really solid this game. But remember, you can never count out those Ottoman players. The four military schools pumping out units non-stop. Spahi are what he's going to be looking at. He's got the option for knights, and it's going to be knights that he switches into. So four military schools on knights. He's also got the, the Mehmed Imperial Armory, which is going to be pumping out units as well. Looks like a couple of... Uh, do we see crossbows? Yeah, we see... How many crossbows have we got? We've got 10 crossbows on the field. This is, this is a good number of crossbows. Exactly what he wants. But look at this. More villagers going to be going down. Has he just got them shift clicked? Yeah, look at this. Look at Lenok. Just shift clicking all the villagers. He doesn't care about the knights. Shift clicking the villas. Now he pulls them away, realizing I'm probably going to lose them. Wants to extend that out a little bit further. Let's take a look. Oh my god. Look at... Look at Lenok. How are you... This is not legal, Lenok. You can't be doing this. This is just... Oh, it's relentless, isn't it? He... The Muslim hasn't had a second to breathe. And now more knights keep rampaging through the base. Meta going to be sent to scout out. 
instead he's like, actually, no matter. You come back. You're not the best of scouting units. Knight continues running through. I think he's going straight to that gold mine once again. Yeah, look at this. Rally straight towards that gold mine. He knows what he wants. He wants the, that gold mine, but down 31, 32, 33 villagers at the moment. 32 now. Um, th this is not a happy position, and the keep is going to get exposed, and the Muslim's going to put his hand on his head. He's not going to wonder where his hair is because he's been bald for quite some time, but he is going to wonder where his beard is. I, I tuned into his stream the other day. He'd taken off his beard, and I was like, who is this guy? And, he, and why does he look 12 years younger? And the answer is he got rid of the beard. I don't know, maybe facial hair. I don't know about you guys. Facial hair, I feel like facial hair just makes you look a lot older. Whenever I shave my facial hair, I'm like, I didn't know you had that many chins. And also, why do you look so young? <laughs> I feel like I'm like 24 when I, when I shave it off. I probably don't look 24, but I, that's what I feel. But anyway, back towards the Lee Nock base. What have we got? What are our upgrades looking at? Look at the, look at the upgrades that we're sitting on right now. We're, we're plus two maxed, except for no, no melee. Mangonel slowly firing down this keep in the center of the map. A couple knights going to be pushing forward. And once again, the Muslim holding on with the defense. He's sitting at about half the villager count right now of his enemy. But remember, he is playing as the Ottomans. He's got those free units coming in nonstop. Looks like the Springle is going to be going down. Villagers trying their best to repair it. We enter into the cinematic mode as these archers together with the crossbows look to push in and try and dish out damage here. But the keep is going to continue firing down. Mangonel's slowly but steadily firing down upon that keep. No sign of a trebuchet just yet. Expect to see that MIA going to be producing a trebuchet shortly. I think it takes about two to three minutes for it to get through. But look at these archers. A little bit overextended. There's a spearman in there with them as well. But at the same time, those crossbows are going to be the money makers, and they need to make sure that they're focusing down those knights, the lower health ones in particular, not being focused down. There we go. Now going to be going down. Does a decent job, but remember, now all of these units... Oh, look at this Arbolatria getting picked up. Arbolatria numbers actually looking pretty decent for Lenok as he moves into men at arms on Arbolatria. Definitely not something I expected to see. But now, on the front side, more stables going to get thrown down. Lenok telegraphing his intention to switch to cavalry. We move it over to the income so we can get an idea of just how far ahead Lenok is sitting at about 2,500 resources a minute versus 1,200. So more than double the resources. But remember, there's free units still coming in. And look at the villager kills. He's up to 58 worker kills this game. Now the crossbow is going to be heading across the map. Rather, the archers with crossbow singular are going to be heading across the map and just getting eaten alive by the Arbolatria together with those knights and the Muslim. He's in an increasingly tough position as the Springles do make their way out. Manganel 1 did go down. Manganel 2 still survives with a little bit of health on it. The knight number's slowly building as well. He's up to three knights now. Manganel trying to get within range. Trebuchet should be every all that he needs to take down this keep. Another three shots and it should be gone. He's just got to bide his time a little bit longer. He'll be fine. And knight's heading in, looking for a couple of free breakfast menu items. And indeed, the Springles will provide it. Delicious, they say. You ever had Springled for breakfast? I have. I had it in Germany. It was quite nice. Not really. That's wood. That's disgusting. What's wrong with you? You people beavers? You shouldn't be watching YouTube. You should be building bridges. No, actually, what do they build? Dams. Build your dam. Shut up and build a dam. Anyway, Keep is now under under repair. So it's going to mean that he needs more than one treb to crack this, which means it's going to be quite the weight. He's actually switched back to mangonels as well. A little bit. I don't, I don't know if that's... Is, is that impatience, perhaps? Maybe is that just the decision? Does he have a Siege Workshop down here somewhere? There it is, Siege Workshop. He could look to, to make it. Mangadel shot coming off, hitting those archers on the backside. Knights on the front. And Lenok demonstrating why one town center is sometimes stronger than two. Impressive performance right there from the Korean. Fellas, if you're interested in checking out more content, make sure you go have a look at Lenok's stream. He streams in Korean, sometimes occasionally in English, and to Muslim, always in English. Thank you so much for watching. Links are in the description, and we'll catch you in the next one.